Hello YouTube, welcome to another tutorial by Pixel and Bracket. I'm Spencer and today we're going to look at how to remove blemishes and marks from someone's face using the Spot Healing Brush tool in Adobe Photoshop. First thing we want to do is go ahead and set up our layers so that we keep the original and work non-destructively. So I've got one layer here with the photo on top of it. I'm going to double click and rename this to original. Hit enter. Next, uh, if you just hold option, click and drag down, it'll make a duplicate of the layer. And notice original copy. Let's go ahead and name this spot healing brush. And I'm going to bring this layer on top of the original layer. So this one's the one we're going to be working from. The original layer is there as a backup and also as a reference to see how far you've taken your image. Make sure, and actually I'm going to go ahead and lock this bottom layer. That way I, I, I can't even use any tools on it. I can't move it around. I'm going to get error messages. Um, if I accidentally click on it somehow, I'm not going to mess with that original layer. So let's select the spot healing brush layer and we need to select the spot healing brush tool. You'll notice it over here about oh seven, six or seven tool tips down is the spot healing brush and that may not be what you see. Depends on what the last tool was that you used in this subset here. The shortcut key for this is J but as you'll notice the shortcut key for all of these is J. So if I was on the patch tool and I switch back to uh, the move tool and I hit J, it's going to take me back to the patch tool. A uh, quick little shortcut to cycle through, through these tools is to hold shift and tap J. You'll notice it's moving through the tools and I'm going to go ahead and stop on the spot healing brush tool, which is the one that we want. First thing I want to do is take a look at the toolbar up top here. There's a couple of options I want to make sure I have set correctly in order for this to really give us the best results. First one here is our is our brush. And we have we have some options here, size, hardness, spacing. Uh, we can change the angle, the roundness of our brush. And if you're using a tablet, you can uh, you can change the size based on your pin pressure or your stylus wheel. I'm gonna keep that off because more often than not, I, I don't really wanna use pin pressure in this case. I want to use the size of brush and be able to rely on it and be consistent with it as I'm removing these blemishes. You know, I don't wanna accidentally make too thin of a stroke because with this tool, Photoshop is actually going to be doing most of the work for us, which is a nice part, but it can be a little finicky at times depending on what you've brushed over on your layer. And we'll get into that here in a second. Uh, I like to keep spacing all the way down. If it's, if it's turned up, you'll notice your brush just spaces out each of the strokes. We don't want that. We want a smooth, reliable stroke spacing. I'm going to keep it 1%. Uh, that way it, it moves the way you know a brush should, as long as you're holding, holding your mouse down or your pen down. Uh, let's see here. Next thing, I actually want to keep hardness turned all the way down because personally I want this brush tip to feather into the surrounding layers as much as possible. You know, I want it to really blend. That's the whole point of uh, removing these and using this tool is that Photoshop's going to do the work to analyze the layers around or the pixels around where you're using your brush and it's going to blend everything together. So I want to keep that hardness down. Now in some cases you might be working with a very sharp section of your image and you know the the feathering effect creates a little bit too blurry of a blend. In that case, maybe you turn hardness up. Maybe we'll actually use some of our other settings up here. We'll get into that here in a second. The size of my brush, that does matter quite a bit actually. Uh, you know, and it all goes back to how much Photoshop is trying to think and analyze as you're working with this tool. Uh, I'm gonna keep my size uh, pretty small actually and 
let me just show you an example of how much this matters. If my size of my brush is about the size of the mark that I want to get rid of, it's going to do a pretty good job of removing that, analyzing the skin tone around it and replacing the area that I brushed over with essentially newly created texture and skin. Now I'm going to undo that real quick. If my brush tip was way too big for that, Photoshop gets a little bit confused and starts to create other blemishes on there. And that one wasn't actually too bad, um, but you'll notice that change in skin tone. You know, If I go way bigger, we're going to get some really goofy effects and I just created the worst blemish in the history of mankind. So let's get rid of that and bring that brush size back down. All right, the other uh, mode we can we can ignore at this point. You know, normal works just fine. The other thing we do want to look at um, is the type, and Content Aware works really really well. Um, what it does is it's just gonna really analyze all the data and depending on your brush size it's going to look at the pixels around it and try to create a new blended texture over the top of whatever was there originally the other type that i would use is proximity match and that is going to look at essentially what's right around it and actually pull pixels from that area and create that texture and replace inside of there. The difference that we'll get into is content aware can be a little blurrier, a little more blendy looking, whereas proximity match, if you're working in a very sharp area of your image, it's gonna pull some sharp pixels. That can be finicky, it can create harsh edges, and so you may need to work with it a couple of times, maybe even go back and forth between them to create absolutely smooth uh, texture. But these two are probably the most useful of the three. Uh, the other thing to take a peek at, sample all layers. It means exactly what it says. If you have it checked, it's going to not only look at the layer that you're on, but it's gonna look at all the layers in your document and try to blend uh, based on everything. So if I had a, a solid, you know, yellow to black gradient underneath this in between these two, and I have sample all layers and I brush over this blemish, it's going to not only analyze the skin texture around it, but it's also going to try to pull in that yellow, pull in the gradient, look at the photo underneath it, pull that in. In most cases, I keep this off. I just want to work with the image I have in front of me. I'm trying to remove marks from it, blemishes. Um, I would keep that off. I would also keep off any kind of pin pressure because when you're working with this tool, you really want to be as consistent as possible. You want it to be as reliable as possible. All right, so now that we have our tool set up, you notice a second ago that I removed that blemish pretty easily. At first blush, no pun intended, it did seem pretty easy. But let's look at what Photoshop really is doing as we zoom in here. All right, so I'm going to just simply brush over this mark. And remember, try to pick a brush size that's about the size of the marks that you're trying to get rid of and let go. And you'll see that Photoshop did a pretty decent job of replacing with pixels that are around the, the same tone and quality. But you'll notice it created a little bit of line here. That may have been because our brush was a little bit too small. We could have brushed in a little bit bigger of an area. The good thing is we can go right back over that and work with this until we get it blended just right and removed check that out. Now I can hide this layer and we can see what was there before based on our original image. Turn that back on and see it removed. I would just work your way around this image. Work with the pixels 
kind of tap in and out, zoom in and out, see see how they're doing. You might notice that, you know, I think this one made that area just a touch blurry. So I'm going to switch to proximity match. Do the same thing, see how that does. And it's going to pull in some weird things at times. And you just got to play with it until it gives you exactly what you're looking for. And you might also need to switch back and forth between these until it gives you exactly what you're looking for. I just move around your image, removing all the blemishes you see, let Photoshop do the work for you, and before you know it, you're starting to actually remove quite a bit and replace that with some fresh skin tone that is really going to smooth out your subject's face. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video here and work ahead and just show you guys sort of a final result of blemishes and marks removed from this image. Okay guys, welcome back. You might notice if you stuck with me there, we actually zoomed in and out quite a bit and removed quite a few pieces. Let's check the final work here. If I just hide the top layer, we'll see the original below and the updated smoother layer on top. And this is all done with the spot healing brush. You notice how much we actually were able to remove, smooth out, and heal up. You know, at first glance, it looks like a great photo, but if there are some things, maybe you got a massive pimple that you want taken out of the picture, Spot Healing Brush is your tool of choice. Absolutely. Let Photoshop do the majority of the work. All you need to do is paint around the blemish areas, work with it a little bit if it's not giving you the blend you want. I promise, you know, if you go over it a couple times, undo, change the size of your brush, you're going to find a combination that, that works in creating smoother skin, smoother photos. This also works very well in retouching old photos and you can see the results here just from spending five to ten minutes smoothing out some of the facial features. I hope you guys learned a thing or two in this tutorial and check out some of these other related videos.